Hello, I'm Senator Clarence Lamb, and thank you for watching this video covering the first full week of the 2020 legislative session. It's hard to believe that eight months have passed since the end of the 2019 legislative session, because so much has happened and a lot has changed. As many of you were aware, Speaker Bush passed away suddenly on the second to last day of the 2019 session. A month later, in May of last year, the House of Delegates selected a new speaker, with Delegate Adrian Jones of Baltimore County making history as the first woman and first African-American speaker to preside over the Maryland General Assembly. Then in the fall, Senator Mike Miller announced that he would no longer be seeking re-election as the president of the state Senate, a remarkable decision since he had served in that role for the past 33 years and had become the longest serving presiding officer of any state legislature in the country. With Senator Miller stepping down to become President Emeritus, Senator Bill Ferguson of Baltimore City was elected unanimously as the new Senate President on the first day of the 2020 legislative session. This is truly a remarkable time in the Maryland General Assembly and is likely the only time in history that we've entered a legislative session with two new presiding officers. I've been fortunate to have worked closely with both of them, and I know that they are hardworking, dedicated public servants who care about people, understand policies, and are committed to helping Marylanders across the state. With the new change in leadership of the Senate also comes changes in committee chairs. Senator Guy Gazzoni of Howard County was selected as the new chair of the powerful Senate Budget and Taxation Committee, and Senator Will Smith of Montgomery County became the new chair of the important Senate Judicial Proceedings Committee. I was also honored to be selected as the new Senate chair of the Joint Committee on Audits, which is a crucial committee to investigate state agencies and departments to ensure the tax dollars are not wasted and programs are functioning efficiently. In the 2020 legislative session, things have gotten off to a quick start, and I've already had hearings on three bills that I've sponsored. The first bill, SB 40, had its hearing on the second day of the legislative session. This bill is intended to help working families by allowing purchases of diapers to be tax exempt. Many new families and single parents are struggling to juggle the needs of a newborn and rising costs of childcare. And this is a small measure to help these families afford a basic necessity for babies. The second bill, SB 41, will allow the Baltimore County Council to set up truck height monitoring systems throughout the county to ensure that oversized trucks are not unnecessarily driving through local neighborhoods. With many highways crisscrossing Southwest Baltimore County, this bill will allow the county to cite and fine unauthorized trucks in order to prevent excess wear and tear on roads and reduce neighborhood traffic and noise. The third bill, SB 44, will require any newly constructed or renovated state buildings to be built with at least one adult changing facility in its bathrooms. This bill was sponsored in response to a Catonsville family who contacted us because their adult son's disability limited their ability to travel far from home due to inadequate public changing facilities accessible to individuals with disabilities. With a growing population of adults with disabilities like incontinence, this bill will help ensure the dignity and needs of these individuals and their families. In local news, the Howard County delegation met for the first time this year and approved requests for state bond funding for local organizations. The delegation also began consideration of local bills, including measures to address the recent school system redistricting process. In Baltimore County, the delegation voted on new leadership and was honored to be selected as a new vice chair of the Baltimore County delegation with Senator Kathy Klausmeyer serving as a new chair. And that's a wrap for this video update covering the first full week of the 2020 legislative session. If you found this to be informative, I hope you'll like our Facebook page to receive timely updates throughout the week or subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified when a new weekly video is released. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll check back next week for a new video update.